Hey guys, welcome to our live session. Today we'll be talking about UI UX. So guys, my name is Ram. I'm from Great Learning and I will be teaching you guys about UI and UX. So before we do begin, I always do this and if uh, somebody, you know, who follows uh, the live sessions, uh, they might already know about it, but we always do a check. So guys, go ahead and put in the yes or no if you guys can see my screen properly, if you can hear me properly. I just want a good uh, feedback from you guys. I also want to see if there are a lot of people uh, in the chat today. Let's see how interactive we can make the chat today because I want you guys to, you know, talk to me. This session is going to be a little bit more theoretical. So I want to make sure that you guys are not sleeping and you guys are actually, you know, listening to me and talking to me and, you know, discussing this in general. So this is something I want to do going on from now. I want to discuss with you guys because it's all about you. We want to teach you. So we want to make sure that you guys can, you know, uh, get the best experience you want, like UX, right? So till you guys go ahead and give me that confirmation in the chat, there's going to be a small lag, so I'm going to get to know about it a little later only. So I'm going to show you guys something about something really awesome. So it's called Great Learning Academy. So our company that is Great Learning, our YouTube channel, we have come up with something called Great Learning Academy. Now, before you guys turn off or, you know, leave the live session, this is something that we are promoting uh, for those people who don't have the fiscal means. That means they don't have enough uh, money to, you know, buy real courses. Uh, as in more of the premium courses, right? So if you guys want to check out any courses, but you can't pay for them, if you're a college student, or if you just lost your job because of the COVID situation that's been plaguing all of us, then this is something you guys should definitely check out because this is something that will help you guys upskill for completely free. So Great Learning Academy is a venture that we have started that is completely free. We have a lot of courses. We have more than 80 plus free courses and you guys can, you know, check them all out. We have different courses on data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, IT and software. You guys can see a lot of things even within IT and software. You have data structures, you have, you know, programming, cybersecurity, ethical hacking, big data, marketing and finance. So it's not just those technical domains. If you're a person, you know, who is more, uh, you know, relating towards their uh, creative side. And you might be a person who is like that because you're watching a session on Intro to UI UX. So you might be interested in design and video editing. Now, right now we don't have that many courses, but we have good courses that you guys can go ahead and watch. And they're definitely going to be putting more over here. And if you guys demand it, we will try to put up whatever, you know, stream that you guys want, right? So that was about Great Learning Academy. You guys can go ahead and visit it by the link. Just type in Great Learning Academy on Google or download our mobile app and do it from there, right? So let me come back. Now let us open the chat and see what kind of interaction we're getting today. So let me just open it on the side. All right, so I see there are a lot of people here today and I'm really happy that you guys are very interested to learn about UI UX because this is a very burgeoning field where it requires you to think critically about the design process behind anything. Now, UI UX is generally about websites, but it can be for a lot of different things. And I will go into detail more about it later. And I can see right now in the chat that you guys are saying, yes, yes, yes. So let's see who all are there. Yes, again, Kashyap. I always see Kashyap and I really like it. Kashyap always is, never fails to attend any of the sessions. Now I see a lot of other people also over here. We can see uh, Vishwakarma, Khan, uh, T.I. And we have Pawan Kumar. We have Sudarshan, Deepak. We have a lot of people coming in and it's really nice. Um, more hellos. The screen is visible. All right, so we have Soumya. We have Marzaban. Okay, that's really awesome. A lot of people here. And I'm really, really happy that you guys are interacting in the chat, right? So the first thing that, you know, is being asked is please make some more sessions regarding Jupyter Notebook. So Kashyap, we will sure keep your request in regard. I will let my team know and we will try to come up with more sessions regarding Jupyter Notebooks, all right, and Python related. And Deepak is asking our first question. Hi, GL team. May I know the prerequisites into transitioning into a career and UI UX? So this is the exact session that you want to watch to understand how you can go. Right. OK, so the first thing I want to discuss regarding UI UX, how many of you know what UI UX is? I want to know if you guys know what UI is, what UX is. 
go ahead and tell me in the chat i really want to understand that how many people actually know the difference and know what these two things are and how they're distinct from each other so we're seeing a lot of people asking uh, about courses like deepak is asking for an advanced course yeah we'll definitely come up on that if there if you demand it you know we will try to get to that request all right come on let's see the chat what what do people have to say what is ui ux can can just somebody explain that for me or just say any small word or anything related to it because that gives me a perception of how the chat you know is uh, you know knowledgeable how knowledgeable it is about the certain topic So we have the first answer. So Hima Bindu is saying it's user interface, right? It's user interface. UI is user interface, but what is UX? And we get the first answer again from Hima Bindu, where she says that it's user experience. And Deepak is like, no idea. Only heard about it user experience in U uh, user interface. So you guys are kind of right. So some people are saying that they know UI, like Ajinkya is saying they know UI, but they do not know UX. So a lot of people are saying that it's user interface and user experience. The answers are exactly correct, and we have a long answer also. Anirudh is saying that the user interface is the series of screens, pages, visual elements like buttons, icons that enable a person to interact with a product or a service. That is true. UI is user interface. It's how you interact. is how a user interacts with anything it can be a website it can be a particular product it can be your app it can be a desktop app it can be your operating system also now if i close my presentation over here and you know show my busy uh, uh desktop you guys can see this beautiful artwork that was painted by some really awesome artists now this is in part of the user experience design Uh, this is something that i have chosen myself but over here you guys can see that the operating system itself has an ui and it has a managed ux now something you guys might know about is apple right apple has an amazing user experience if you ever open up any apple product you'll always enjoy the sites you see even if you look at their website itself now if i open up over here if i just go apple.com the first thing that will you know uh, it will be their way of directing our whole experience so the first thing we see we see the apple logo and the logo looks really really good it says welcome to the future of mac so they want us to know about the future of what their product uh, you know direction is so it's a lot about the interaction the user has so ui is basically your interaction and experience is how you experience the whole product so the kind of similar in these aspects so that's where a lot of confusion comes in people get confused what is the difference between ui and ux so let's clear that so user interface is about guiding and appeasing the user visually whereas user experience is in basic about designing an experience for the user a clear distinction here would be to imagine how a website looks versus how a website feels like if you come back to the apple website over here what do you want to look at as a user as a user i think of apple as their phone right their phone is the most popular thing that they have ever sold so i want to see i want to see where i can find an iphone app phone uh apple iphone so the first thing you can see is iphone over here so they've clearly marked out their products that is what the people want the people want to look at mac they want to see ipads they want to see iphones so this is clearly very easily available to the user to look at and to use right so i click on iphone over here and i can directly go and check out all the latest iphone apps they have now this is something that is a part of a user experience where the people at apple they want to direct how we experience their website So the first thing I see is iPhone 12 Pro. It's a leap year. So what is this something leap year? So they're telling us to pay attention to this, right? This particular fact. And then we scroll down. We see the beautiful way that they designed their new phone. So this is how they're directing our experience. They're making us look at something new, iPhone 12 Pro. But they want to, 
you know, show us something important. It's a leap year. They want to direct our experience towards uh, this part. They want to direct our, us to that. So they have bolded it. They have boldened it, right? So that is a part of the whole experience that we are getting. So even, you know, after that, we have the pricing and everything over here. So this pricing depends on how you want to buy your, the phone and everything. So this is, again, a whole part of the experience that the developers, uh, designers at Apple want us to see. And user experience can be in different formats also. Now I'm showing you a website. So if you look at the Apple iPhone itself, when you use the product, you feel that it's really good to use, right? It, it feels really nice to use. When you switch from an Android to iPhone, you'd never want to switch back. I can guarantee you 100% that you will never want to switch back because iPhone just feels really good. Now, I myself don't have an iPhone. I am an Android person solely because I have my own reasons. I like my flexibility and everything. But I cannot deny the fact that they make it very beautiful. They make it very useful. In Android, sometimes when you want to use a feature, let me give you guys an example. So let's say in Android, if you want to transfer your files, right? It, it It's a lot of hassle. Like you have to wonder how you're going to transfer your files. Now, these days, internet is big and it has a lot of applications for that purpose. But imagine back then when, you know, iPhone was new and Android was new, where it was very difficult to transfer files. Like maybe if you want to transfer your file from your phone to your laptop, then you would have to, you know, connect your USB or put it in the Dropbox and those kind of things. But with Apple, they had the airdrop feature from pretty early on where you can just, you know, drop your files. So that is again the part of how the user experiences a particular product, right? All right, so let's come back. We've seen the difference between UI and UX. I hope you guys really understood what the difference is. If you guys did not understand, just let me know. I'll try to explain it again. While you guys give me that input, let me just see what else you guys have to say. <clears throat> so, so Shikar is saying UI is basically that developer develops and UX is what the user feels that using that UI. He's exactly right. That's exactly what I've explained. Now, the thing is that these these de designations right of a web developer of a ux developer of a ui developer it can vary a lot and sometimes it's very vague uh, matlab it's not very uh, clear distinct matlab, uh, if you ever apply for a job uh, as a ui ux developer you might have a different set of responsibilities in one company versus another company so one company might say that they want a ui ux developer but instead, you know, what they want you to do is they want you to come and design the whole website for them, create the website and code it also. So sometimes it can be that. In other companies where they have particular teams for developing, they don't need that sort of thing. And they have their own UI team and they have their own UX team. So they have like multiple different teams that work on the same projects. So depending on company to company, you can, you know, it can vary on how you are doing the things you're doing. Like you can be a, both a UX developer and a UI developer, or you can do all of the things together. So like, uh, I'll, take, I'll give you guys an example. So uh, I've done my internship in a very small company. It was like a very small startup back in my college itself. And over there, I had to do both UI, UX, and even a lot of development. Now I didn't solely do the developing part but i had to do some parts of it right so there you guys can see that depending on whether it's a startup where they don't have that many resources to spend on so many people or depending on if it's a very big company where they have this kind of uh, resources where they can allow a lot of different people to work on different things right so that matters so uh, let's move on. Let's talk about UX in detail. So I'll give you guys a clear-cut idea about myself. So I am more UX inclined. I, I, have, I have a philosophy that even though things do look good, they need to feel good. All right. So when you use something, you want to make sure that you are happy when you're using it. Right. Even though it may not look that great, it needs to feel that it's great. Right. Uh, so that's why UX is very important in this case. So how does the UX thing happen? How do you define a user experience? So let's talk about that. So the UX process, what are the different things you think about when you're talking about the UX process? Now, uh, can somebody let me know if they have some kind of idea about UX process? Like, do you know what we do in this UX process? Like, yes, we know that we want to make amazing experience for our customers, but how do we do it? Just let me know in the chat. So Deepak is asking, can you tell me which is more important, UI or UX? So I'll answer that question till you guys give me an input. Uh, so it really it depends, right? Uh, 
<laughs> I have a personal bias with UX. I think UX is more important than UI. Uh, if you ever go to the Amazon uh, .in .com, uh, Amazon uh, .com, right, you'll always see that even though they're not that visually appealing, that website, it's always, you know, uh, they, they know what they're doing. They give you a directed experience where you can go to your orders, where you can track your orders, where you can search for things and those kind of things, right? Um, <clears throat> All right, so that's why I think UX is a little bit more important. So I guess people don't know what a UX developer does. So let's go into the process of UX. Uh, him, him was saying coding. No, I, no, I mean, not every UX developer will be doing it. If you're working on a very small scale, maybe you're doing it. But generally, the whole thing is that UX developers don't code. They don't really code anything. But yes, what Abhishek is saying is exactly right. We have to know the human psychology for UX. So you have to empathize with people. You want to know how the users are feeling. So as a trainer, as a host right now, I am talking to you guys, right? I uh, So when I made this presentation, I was thinking from your steps. What do you guys want to hear? What are the questions that you guys will ask? So I had to empathize with you guys. Similarly, a UX developer, if he's designing anything, again, let me give the example of Apple. So the Apple developer, he will, you know, empathize with the user. He'll try to understand what kind of things does a user want. So as a user, I may want to look at fancy things. I may want to, you know, uh, look at, uh, you know, the product that they're giving, but I always don't know what I want. So that's, that's good that you're empathizing with the user, but you should never just solely go on what the user wants. There are a lot of different aspects in here. You want, you have to know a lot of different things. So these are the kind of questions you need to answer. Who is that for? So who is the product for? If you're developing a product, who is the product going to be aimed towards? What is the demographic? Is there a certain crowd that you want to market? So let's say my crowd as a UI UX developer is, uh, you know, college students or someone who's in a creative side. So I will try to make my presentation look really good, right? Because I want to attract them. So that's what I'm going to do. So that is something you have to take in mind. And who's the product for? Who's the demographic? Who you're going to be targeting? And what is the business about? So as a UX developer, you definitely need to understand how a particular business works. You need to know how a certain business is going to function. So let's say that again, we'll take the example of Apple. Apple's business, uh, you know, uh, is about selling hardware. They sell iPhones. They sell, you know, uh, the accessories with iPhone. They sell iPods. They sell laptops. They sell a lot of different things. So as a UX developer, I would need to know that. Now, some cases, I don't need to know the whole business because Apple is a very big company. So going to know everything in detail is very difficult. So I'll need to narrow down and think about what the product is. So that is the when the question comes in, what is our product and service that we're trying to market or that we're trying to sell? So you have to understand what a product does. So if an iPhone is in talks, then we have to understand what kind of user wants an iPhone. Not everyone wants to buy an iPhone, right? We know that. So iPhone, we study our aspects of iPhone. It's a, it's a luxury product that we try to sell to a certain demographic. And we try to sell it in this way. We try to sell it in a particular time of the year. We release new versions every year. So how do we plan for that? So those kind of things have to come in your mind and you have to ask these kind of questions, right? So then you have to ask like, who do we compete against? So that is again important because you need to know the, what the competitor is doing. So UX process is not like a originality competition where you have to design something original. The whole point of UX is to make an experience for the user. So it's not of the fault if you try to emulate someone else's design. So if I like Apple's design, I will take some concepts out of that. So I will take the idea of having such bright and large visuals on my screen. So this is again a part of UI as well as UX because even you even visual interaction is kind of uh, you're creating an experience. So I like this idea and I will take this and I'll copy it. So that's not a big problem. You won't be caught for it. And that's how the industry kind of works. You try to emulate someone else's behavior. If you obviously, if I take the same thing, if I develop my website similarly, exact same website, then it's a big problem, right? Because I'm just straight off copying. Uh, I need to do it in such a way that, you know, uh, I try to emulate the experience. 
I, I, I take the understanding from here. I understand what they're trying to do. So that is the kind of field you are in. So you have to understand what the competitor is doing. You, you have to see what things they're doing right and what things they're doing wrong. So you have to understand that. And you need to ask the question, how do the users behave using a product and service? So there is a thing in UX process called user testing, which is very important. You have to understand is is the, you know, basically is, uh, how is the be user behaving? So let's say we take the iPhone product again. We give this iPhone product, oh no, no, let me scratch that. Let me take a new product altogether. Uh, what do you guys, what, what would you guys like? Uh, let's say Netflix. Netflix is pretty popular. Uh, okay, there's a question. Is UI UX in demand? Shrishti, yes, UI UX is very big in demand and it's gonna boom in a few years, I'm definitely telling you, especially human computer interaction. With more and more we get, you know, connected to our devices and everything, the more important this is going to become. And uh, especially because of the COVID situation, we have to work remotely. So we are interacting with our devices even more. So that is, again, pushing uh, us over the threshold where you, if you join and understand UI UX right now, uh, uh, you, you basically, you know, uh, are making a career for yourself. Oh, Deepak is asking, won't that be a part of copyright infringement? That is a very good question, Deepak. So when I said that you copy someone's experience, you, you, you basically try to emulate them. You're not copying them. Like, okay, you are copying them, but you're not copying their product or anything. You're trying to copy the kind of experience. If I work for a small company, I want to make sure that, you know, I want to give the best you experience to the users. So I will look at what Apple is doing. I'll understand what Apple is doing. So if I get proper understanding what Apple is doing, I'll try to emulate that concept. I might not just put these phones themselves together like this, but I might give a similar type of design where I understand this is the best technique and let me try this best technique. But don't concentrate on that fact too much. I just wanted to give you like a small facet of it. It's definitely not the whole thing. You will be, uh, you know, you will have to be original, but not always. You will, you can't, you know, make the wheel from scratch. Uh, you have to follow some standards and that are already implemented uh, in the industry that people already use, right? So I hope you did not take that as a wrong way when I said, who do we compete against and we have to copy. I think copy is the wrong word in that situation. I think we should use the word emulate, right? And one more question, what kind of impact do we want to make? So we want to make sure when we're designing an experience for the user, it's going to be like a flow. So when you're designing that experience, you want to make sure that the user follows that experience. So if you ever use an Apple product, you'll see that people are completely managed. You can't change a lot of things. If you want to change certain things in your iPhone, you have to jailbreak it or do some kind of workarounds. And that is very, you know, a lot of hassle. So that convenience that Apple gives us, right? The privacy, the whole uh, experience that we get to do, the, that is something that, you know, Apple aims for. So that's where people come more towards the product. Even though if I don't have money right now, I still want to buy the iPhone because it, it is very easy to use. And, you know, I use my friend's iPhone and it was really nice. All right. So, and how does the business process work? That again comes in the business is about. All right. So these are the different things you have to consider when you are working as a user experience. Now there is definitely a process and I will explain to you what this whole process is. Just understand that this thing about user experience is asking questions. The thing is always, if you are want to, because you want to go into user designing, always ask questions, understand everything. See, you will not be coding over here. You will not be doing any engineering work, but you have to do critical thinking. You have to do something not just for the sake of doing it. You have to do it by understanding the rationale behind it. Okay, let's say if I design my website in a way where I have uh, very large uh, blobs, they look very artistic, right? They look really good. But what if my user doesn't really like it? So I don't want to do it just for the sake of looking good. I want to do it by understanding what will be the best experience. All right, so now let's go to the user experience. I've already ranted a lot about the user process and questions you need to ask yourself. Let's go to the question, uh, you know, this thing. Uh, process there is. Uh, but, but before I do begin, begin the process, let's take a small break and let me just go through the questions you guys have again and again. Uh, you've been posting. Uh, okay, Sakshi is asking, sir, could you please uh, speak Hindi uh, language with English? All right, uh, that is a difficult uh, request because uh, if I start speaking in Hindi, uh, okay, I think you know I speak in Hindi, then it would be a little difficult for some people who don't know Hindi, right? So if you can understand uh, English, uh, you know, just watch it in English. Now, if there's a special request in Hindi, or if there's a special request in both Hindi and English, 
I can think about doing a session on that. I don't mind. I really don't mind. But uh, right now, I want to stick in English because I think there might be some people who don't understand Hindi, right? Uh, uh, unknown says I <laughs> their name is not here. UI watching YouTube uh, video watching a video on YouTube example for UI. Uh, yes, that is a good example. Like when you look at YouTube, right? YouTube has amazing user experience. Um, I think so. Like there are some bag uh, drawbacks that I feel I can point out. Like sometimes the users, right? Not all users will be adding videos. Uh, so there's no need for that plus button in the middle when you open your mobile app, right? Uh, but they might have a reason behind that. They might want to, you know, um you want you to want to push you towards creating content so there might be a reason behind that so always there is a reason behind things why uh, people do things right now the reason might be that you know they forgot about it but generally in a big company that's not always the case uh internet interaction also increases ui ux yes kashyap you're exactly right internet the more you are on internet the more you see uh, this ui ux being used especially in interaction cases uh, designing skills and development, there's no question, so I'm going to move on. Uh, at Gr Lakshmi is asking, at Grayling, is there any helpline number support to know more about the premium courses? Hey, uh, sure. I mean, uh, go ahead and leave your mail. Uh, our moderator will note it down and, you know, you, we can always go ahead and contact you. Or if you want just something very simple you can go do, just go ahead and head to greatlearning.in. So the moderator will go ahead and give you the link and you can register over there. All right. So that's where we do our premium courses. But anyways, coming back, that's not something we want to discuss more. Uh, again, Ayman is asking, can you please include expert level UI UX course? All right, Ayman, um, since you've given this request, we'll keep it in mind. And when we're going ahead and making more courses, we will definitely come up with a course for the purpose of UI UX. Could you suggest some certifications for UI UX? Yes, there are a lot of certifications for UI UX. But I would recommend for you to start learning from the free resources that are available to you first. Don't directly go for a certification. That is, uh, you know, uh, don't go for a paid certification right now itself because, uh, you know, uh, you need to understand the whole concept if it's something you want to start. Now, once you do understand, then I definitely recommend uh, taking any of those uh, paid uh, certifications. See, free certifications won't hurt you at all, so go ahead and take them. But paid certifications, you know, you're putting in your money, so be careful where you're investing them. So that's why I suggest starting with uh, free resources. All right, so with that questions out of the way, let's do the UX UI process. So the first, sorry, UX process, not UI. So the UX process is, the first thing you want to do is you want to do research work. So in research work, there is a lot of different levels of research. You're doing user research. You are researching about the product. So those questions that I talked about earlier, those are the questions that you generally ask during the research work. So you need to document everything. If you're joining a new company as a user, user experience developer, you need to understand their business understand talk to the business developers talk to the ceo talk to whoever your manager is get to know the whole process of the you know behind the scenes working because you definitely need to understand the whole business proce uh, process or what about product business process so if it's a very big company understand the whole process behind creating the product or service that you're developing so that is a part of research work where you understand that and another thing that you do in research work is you basically understand the user so now you've understood the product, you go ahead and start to understand the user. So let's say, uh, for example, I am making a new watch. Uh, okay, now let's take a let's take a website example. So uh, let's let's take a new website. Let me go to Amazon. Oh no, let's go to Netflix. But nah, let me go to Amazon. So we head to Amazon.in over here. So let's say that, you know, Amazon wants to start a new service where they're delivering food and everything. So uh, that is the product they have in their mind. So the user developers know the product. Now the next thing that they want to, uh, you know, do is they want to understand what kind of users will be coming over here. They know that Swiggy and Zomato have a big market captured and Uber Eats have a big market captured. So they want to make sure that they have a particular niche for themselves or they can take in customers from other side. So there you have to know what kind of users will come in. So you have to develop personas. What kind of personas will come and watch these things? So let's say, again, I'll take my own example also. I am making this, uh, you know, presentation 
So I'll try to understand what kind of people want to watch my videos, right? And accordingly, I'll try to create the experience, the storyline and how I create my PPT. So I'll design it in such a way. So I have to understand the people behind this, the audience. So similarly, even in research work, when you're developing a new product, you have to understand the user. So you create personas. You can create multiple personas. You can have one persona where you define that uh, this, this person is a blue collar worker and uh, he comes home late and uh, he doesn't have a wife or anything so it's very difficult for him to create food so he basically goes ahead and um, makes his own food but that is again very tired uh, tiring so he instead wants to order food so he'll order from our amazon's delivery service right so that is one persona so where you have to define a lot of different things like what the user is what are the user's motivations what are the user's goals and those kind of things uh, another word for this is like user stories where you develop user stories uh, you make uh, fictional stories of fictional people and you want to try to understand users in that way. So that is all part of the research work. So once you've done all the legwork of understanding everything research, you go to the wireframing process. Now the wireframing process is basically a process in which you are developing the layout and uh, basic design of it. Uh, let me show you guys an example. So I work with Adobe XD for wireframing. Let me open up my Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is a tool that is used for wireframing and prototyping, basically all the user stuff, right? So let's say I open this. Oh no, no, let's go back. Let's go to the homepage. I already have a design in place. Let me show you guys that design. That'd be much better. So let me open this uh, IPL website I created. So it's not the IPL website I created, it's a wireframe that we did. So if you guys want to check out this wireframing that I did, I did it in a, during a live session. There is a whole session about the wireframing and how to use Adobe XD. I go into a little bit more detail about wireframing and everything, the whole process of it. So you, the moderator will link the session. You can go ahead and check those session out. Uh, so wireframing IPL website. So over here, you guys can see over here how I wireframe the whole website. So wireframes are very, very basic layouts. So you guys can see this is the navigation bar. Uh, this is the basically the secondary thing and we have one image, one image. So basically this was supposed to be uh, IPL team one, IPL team two, cricket team one, cricket team two, their details and everything and more details like the points table and the uh, trivia like orange cap, purple cap and those kind of things, right? So th this is a basic design over here for that kind of website. So wireframes are generally like this. <laughs> this is a very, very low fidelity wireframe. Now here fidelity means... Uh, how good they look basically. So it doesn't look really that great, but it gives me a layout. It gives me an understanding of how the whole layout will be of my website, right? So these are wireframes. So once you've done your research work, you move on to your wireframing step where you wireframe uh, the whole website. And once you're done wireframing, you give it to the stakeholders or let's say you are working for your boss, right? So you give it to your boss, your boss gives an inputs or the business side within your company, they'll give an input that, yeah, I think this is fine or the marketing department. And they'll say like, we want this, this changed and we want this to be added also. So that's where you understand the revision requests. You understand what kind of revisions that you need to put. And if you think that they actually need to be put, you can go ahead and put them. And then you go ahead and create prototypes. Now prototypes, the difference between wireframing and prototypes is prototypes are your, uh, your they're more higher fidelity. In, in that you're basically creating like the website and all. Like here I created one, first it was a wireframe and then we started adding those kind of things like letters, we added Virat Kohli photo, we added graphics and start now buttons and everything. So you give start giving a little bit more color over here and you start de defining what button does what. If you select course, uh, it takes me to a particular course, right? So that's the prototyping phase. Now, once you've pr prototyped, you will go ahead to the next set of processes where you understand the revision requests again, where you give your uh, prototype to your, uh, you know, person uh, who's in charge, like your senior UX developer or your business uh, partner or your, you know, uh, your business team, your marketing team. And they again give you uh, this thing back. They give you the ideas. They, they give you all the ideas. They give you all the changes that they want and everything, right? 
So that is again the part of it. And then you start testing. Now testing is a very important part of UX design. So if you ever hear about user experience, you'll always hear user testing. Now user testing is very important. That's why I've written test, 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 because I want to emphasize it. That is again a part of the experience I'm giving you guys. <laughs> okay, so that was a meta where I'm, see, I'm telling you test, test, test. That is a part of me emboldening the whole idea, right? If I put this in bold, that, that means I'm making the user experience where they're directed to this particular thing. So testing is important because user testing is what tells you in reality might happen. Because when you start off the whole process, you start off with a problem, like you understand your product and you understand the problem, you create a problem statement. Once you create the problem statement, you try to resolve the problem statement, right? To resolve the problem statement, you need to first have some assumptions. Like uh, with the food delivery app again, my problem was that I wanted to create a food delivery app, right? Now the assumption we are going with is uh, certain assumption we are going with that is that our prototype will work for certain people. So next thing is we want to test those assumptions. To test those assumptions, you have to test it with user focus groups where you have a lot of different types of demographics there where you think you'll be targeting them, right? And when you target those demographics, you test with those demographics. You give them website layouts. So let's say, let me come back to my wireframe. Uh, this is my wireframe, but imagine this is a prototype where all the pictures and everything are there. And I'll start giving it to you guys. And you look at it and you'll be like, nah, I don't really... Uh, so you'll ask them to work with it. So you'll ask the users to look at this and you'll ask the users to just check out the different things there are. And they'll look at it, they'll understand, okay, this is fine and all. Um, and they'll start, they'll start interacting with it. So once they start interacting with it, that's when you start monitoring them. So you have to monitor everything. You have to monitor how they behave to every website you give them. They have, they will, you have to monitor how they move their mouse, where they're going, where the eye is going and everything. Because that tells you how a user will interact with your particular product. So once you test it, right, you have to test it multiple times. You test it with one specific group again and again uh, and have different designs. So the design, if you, so let's say you have three designs. Yeah, you always create more than one prototype. You never go with one prototype. You have like multiple prototypes and you uh, test all three prototypes. So the person will come, they'll check the first prototype of my IPL website, the second prototype of my IPL website and third one or my Amazon food delivery app, right? So they'll, they'll, they'll uh, you'll be testing the users with that. And the one they choose, the one they choose, the one they tell you that they like, you'll be inclined to that particular uh, website also. But there is the distinction you have to make that even though they choose themselves, they might not actually like it later. Because sometimes as users, they don't know what they want to do. So an uh, uh, example of people not knowing what they want to do is like sometimes you ask for certain characters in movies, you want to see a movie for those characters only. So let's say we're talking about Avengers. You want to see uh, Paul Rudd as uh, Ant-Man again in another movie. You want to see him more and more. But then you see that it's uh, in the starting, you feel like, yes, it will be good. But when you actually watch the movies, they might not be that great because that character is good in only small portions. So as a user, you don't always know yourself. So you have to understand what the user likes and what they want. Like you can understand from the behavior what they want. I hope that is a little bit more clear. So in testing, you test all of those things. You observe, observe, you test, and you see what people do, right? So once you understand from that, you understand the feedback. So basically, you'll understand what the uh, users are saying. You'll understand the feedback you got from observing them. And then you'll go ahead and apply those changes you learned. And that's when you push ahead whatever you learn as a prototype to the developers or the UI designers who will fine tune it, who will add the typography icons and all those things. And, you know, then the website will go ahead. So this is basically kind of in the gist of what a UX process is. All right. Okay. So now let's take a small break again. Let me see what you guys uh, are saying. Okay, so I'm gonna say great learning, which tool is better, Adobe XD or Figma? That really depends. Adobe XD is uh, something that I use. So I have a bias against it, but I have used Figma before. And Figma is also pretty good. There are certain features uh, that you can use there. And it's really good for collaboration, like, you know, real-time collaboration. If there are three people, they want to brainstorm an idea, yeah, or there's like a whole team, then it becomes easier to use Figma. Or uh, if you're using Mac, uh, Mac generally has Sketch. All right. 
शशांक इज सेंग हे गाइज आई हैड अ हार्ड टाइम वर्किंग विद फ्रंट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लाइक सी एस एस जे एस ई जैक्स एंड जे क्वेरी वेल शशांक इट्स ऑल राइट पीपल कैन हैव हार्ड टाइम्स एंड एवरी थिंग इट्स ऑल इज अ लर्निंग प्रोसेस यू स्टार्ट विद बेबी स्टेप्स ओके सो वी हैव सम वीडियोज ऑन सी एस एस एंड जावा स्क्रिप्ट देर बाय एन अमेजिंग इंस्ट्रक्टर इज नेम इज फैजान यू शुड गुड गो हेड एंड चेक दम आउट जस्ट टाइप इन ग्रेट लर्निंग एंड फ्रंट एंड डेवलपमेंट और जस्ट टाइप इन ग्रेट लर्निंग एंड सी एस एस और एच डी एम एल और जावा स्क्रिप्ट वट आर यू लुकिंग फॉर दोज वीडियोज विल डेफिनेटली हेल्प यूर और राइट सो दैट्स द एंड ऑफ आर क्वेश्चन लेट्स गुड लिटल बिट मोर अबाउट वाई फ्रेमिंग so wireframing allows us to get the basic idea of the layout of any website application we create wireframe basically to plan how the content of the website will be displayed also so uh, basically we try to lay out the whole design right so that is the idea of a wireframe it's like a blueprint so if you want to compare a wireframe to anything a blueprint is a good idea like if you want to build a house you can't just build a house you need to plan and you need to do the designing and everything so you can compare wireframes to blueprints right and you have different kinds of wireframes you have low fidelity you have high fidelity and you have extreme fidelity that's when it goes into the territory of being a prototype right so you move from a wireframe to a prototype and uh, you can have different levels between that all right so prototype is basically it functions like the layout design of how an actual website will look like so your prototype might be like this right it might have all the icons the typography the colors the images and all of that your wireframe won't have any of these now again you move from wireframe to a prototype right all right <clears throat> uh i wanted to give you guys an example of netflix user testing so netflix is an a uh, website that really concentrates or focuses on the user testing now i won't go into too much detail about netflix because i want to tell you guys about ui also All right so this is what uh, they do they generally try to do ab testing you can watch some videos on these uh, netflix talks about how they use ab testing it's very interesting video i definitely recommend it as a user experience designer you need to understand from your peers that's what i meant by copying <laughs> so the, again whoever asked that question i did not say you need to copyright infringe you need to do copyright infringement what i said was you need to understand and learn from other people emulate their ideas okay <laughs> don't copy exact same things Uh, so go ahead and you always understand what's happening in the industry right uh, you need to know how what methods people are using and how they're doing it right so basically what they did was they came up with multiple designs and in these multiple designs they wanted to see which design would hold true so what did they do so they did something called a and b testing so a and b testing is basically where you have one control experience and multiple variations on that so control experience is what you have by default it's uh, something that they had uh, currently so and then they had variations on that like they changed it and they had made new designs so they asked users to test both of these variations and the control experiences so in a lot of cases what happened was that uh, the control experience won even though they wanted new designs and they created new variation designs uh users didn't like them that much the users generally prefer to use control experience so even with that you can understand that maybe if in a new direction that you are going is not you know maybe the best direction maybe the control experience that you have that is the original thing that is the best thing right so product development in product development you generally have multiple series of experiments so that was the whole point of this where i'm telling you guys you need to have multiple series of experiments and only multiple series of experiments with the use kept keeping the user in thought and keeping the business process in thought is what's going to lead you to a stronger design all right okay so here are some of the ux tools that are used like you have adobe xd you have a, a sketch you have figma you have photoshop and you have envision now company to company they can vary um, you can create uh, you know your wireframes and prototype anywhere you want generally people use these kind of tools because they allow them higher collaboration or they allow them with faster wire uh, wireframing so wireframing is something you don't want to spend a lot of time on obviously you want to understand how you're going to do it but you don't need to spend like small small time make those lines or add some details and all that you don't need to do that you want to make a wire uh, wireframe very fast right so these are some of the tools you can use now even here i can go ahead and add pictures and everything make it into a prototype and uh, let me just show you guys uh, so i take this if i go to a prototype i can take this and attach it to this this thing right that means that if i select this particular bar it will take me to the next page so if i play this so you can see the prototyping work thing is happening it's playing the prototype for me so if i scroll this is my website right let me just full screen this so this is my website right 
And if I select over here, it will take me to another website. Well, this is the same thing, just an example. Uh, so prototype is basically where you can show the functionality of everything, right? And you show the colors and everything. High fidelity, high fidelity versus low fidelity. Okay, just keep that distinction in mind between wireframes and prototypes. Uh, this is not a prototype, this is a wireframe. I just showed you that connection thing, okay? All right, let me come back. All these are the tools you can use. Envision is a good tool, I like that. Um, Figma is, uh, I've used Figma also. Somebody asked about Figma. Figma again is uh, awesome. It's a browser-based tool. That's what uh, turned me off. I really am not interested in, uh, I don't like browser-based tools because of my past experience. So that's on me. Definitely different people will have different kind of uh, experience and you might like browser-based tools. So you might be into that. Or, you know, maybe in future, I might be forced to start using Figma. Who knows, right? <laughs> it can always change. Life is like a changing thing. You can see Figma. You go to the Figma website and you can see how their animations are coming together. See, this is nice and all. It looks really good. Uh, and you can see how, what they're trying to show. They're trying to show four uh, mouse points. So here itself, they're trying to show you that what the main thing is. Where teams design together. That is a part of the user experience where I understand immediately without any issues what this tool is about, where there are mouse pointers coming in and it tells me that this is a coll collaboration designing tool, right? Okay, now let me come back. Let me start talking about the best tool of all. Now the best tool of all, uh, can you guys guess the best tool of all? J uh, guys, give me a second. Huh? There's a lot of disturbance in the back. I'll just... Uh you know, uh, quiet the disturbance. And till then, you guys need to give me the answer of what the best tool of all is. If you guys know the best tool of all, give me the answer. All right, so let's see what you guys have for me in the answers. Let's see. Um, hmm. uh, no answers. What? I'm very surprised. You guys didn't tell me what the best tool of all is? Or maybe is there a lag? I'm going to wait like a few more seconds because I want to see what you guys think of what is going to be the best tool of all. What do you think is the best tool you will use for user experience designing? Uh, okay, unknown is saying, uh, I think testing. Uh, okay, good reply. I like that reply. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, I think there's a different answer for this. Um, okay, unknown has given another thing. Uh, I have an example of UI UX. Great learning makes video is UI. Watching is UX. Uh, kind of true, but it's more like the video I make the the visuals up here, uh, the p uh, the uh, visuals of it right like where I put the colors and everything that is the UI so it is about uh, me making it visually appealing for you and watching yeah it's kind of it's your experience it's your experience me designing the storyline of how I will teach you guys and how you guys will understand everything that is the user experience so you're you're right yeah exactly unknown yeah a little difference so I see a lot of answers coming in uh, someone saying Sigma no it's not Sigma it's a uh, Figma uh notebook yes yes i wanted that answer brandon is saying it's notebook yes brandon that's the answer that's the answer i was looking for okay so exactly pen and paper so not exactly notebook but pen and paper is very important you need to have a notebook with you as a user experience developer or a ui developer even a ui developer you need a notebook and i would suggest that even whatever you're doing even for coding or if you're doing data science or whatever have a notebook and pen with you because that is the fastest way to make wireframes and design and put in ideas. That is important, right? So pen and paper is very important. Now, let me give you guys an example of the previous session I took on wireframing IPL live uh, websites. So in that, I uh, made up some uh, rough designs over here. 
So these are the rough designs I made on my uh, notebook. You guys can see that uh, old classmate uh, <laughs> date and page over here. And over here, you guys can see the design I made uh, where I put in all the wire framing. I did it by hand where I put the scorecard, the landing page. I put in some ideas like what is what is the user looking for? That's what I wrote over here. IPL stuff, IPL match, player details, IPL points table, previous scorecards, match itself, highlights and news. So those are the ideas I uh, jotted down. And uh, this, is, this is the wireframe I created. And you guys can see this is the second page. So I made all of this in like five to ten minutes. It didn't even take me that long. Actually, it took me a little less. It can take you even one minute to design, write uh, all of this down. So this is again important for brainstorming. So when what you're doing online digitally, that is important also because then you can give it to other people and it looks kind of good. Uh, this is the lowest form of wireframing fidelity. That is the lowest form where it doesn't look good at all, but it's like a sketchbook where you write jotting down your ideas. If you guys know about the animation process, whenever you're animating, right, the whole process starts even even before you put any color. You do, or if you're making movies, you do uh, what is it's called? Uh, I'm forgetting the word for it, but it's called sketching. Oh no, it's not it's storyboarding. That that's right. It's storyboarding. Storyboarding is very important in movies and animation, where you storyboard each and everything, where you tell people, uh, where you uh, have a plan for how you will do it in the end. Like you are animating a very big scene, or you're going to film a very big scene. You want to know how the shots are going to be like. So you take a pen and you take a pencil. You take a pencil, and you take a paper and you design uh, or you uh, sh uh, draw how your uh, uh, actors are going to be like or how your characters are going to be like right that's your uh, wireframing so similarly wireframing is also like this right where you jot it down you jot your ideas down you make rough sketches all right so now let's discuss ui let's see how many people got it right yes some people said uh, on paper you're right so paper and pen and paper again very important so there's like, yeah, I have used only Figma till date, so I can't say which is best among them. Yes, only uh, truly, truly, anyone who's used both, can you, if you guys can pitch in, yeah, I would like your opinion. Even I'm biased against uh, XD, so I say XD. Uday says it's Figma, so it depends, right? Uh, Durga Prasad is like, sir, make a course in learning English from scratch to advance. Please try to make. Uh, Durga Prasad, you should definitely go ahead and check out uh, our Great Learning Academy. We have free courses where we talk about uh, English courses. Yes, uh, you can go ahead and check those out. Uh, I think you can, if you check to in popular courses, we have Smart English Basics for Professionals and we have more English courses coming up. So you can check them out in Great Learning. All right, coming back. Let's see more questions. If you guys have any? Uh, 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 if I can pronounce that name properly, uh, Fas Fasia says that, can you please publish this video? Do not worry. This video will be rewatchable after it's been, uh, session has been finished. Okay, let's discuss UI now. Now, I personally uh, like visual design also, but I don't know a lot about UI design, right? Uh, not a lot of it. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt, okay? Okay, so we have visuals. We have icons, we have mood, we have typography, and we have motion design, and we have interaction design also. So all of these are the concepts you will see in U U UI. So you'll see visuals where you are seeing how it would look like. You are defining the icons to use. So if you know how like, the icons over here, so like uh, what is the icon for uh, the user? What is the icon for play button? What is the icon for you know the select button? What is the icon over here? So these are the icons. And when I say typography, I mean what how it's going to be written. What are the font size you're going to use? What is the font color you're going to use? What is the font color over here? And what is the font type you're going to use? Uh, I think I already said that. Type, size, and color and everything. Okay, so that is your typography. Now, interaction design is basically where you see how the users will interact. So it's a part of UI, but it's a part of UX also. So there's a lot of overlapping between UI UX. Technically, if I had to say UI is a part of UX, uh, but it can depend again. So uh, UX is a part of product designing and uh, UI is a part of UX. You can take it in that way. And motion design, motion design is uh, again, uh, an example of motion design would be, again, the Figma website where they brought these two together. If I just uh, refresh this, you guys can see that animation that they do. It's basically those animations that people do, right? So where they bring the W, the teams, the design. So this is uh, your motion design. Yeah. All right. So there's one thing you guys will see that this doesn't really look good. It's all up here. Now, this is fine and all, but if you look at this design, it's a little better where you guys can clearly see visuals, icons, interaction design, typography, mood, and motion design. So this way I've ultimately improved you guys looking at these things and 
reading it, right? Making the increasing the readability over here. But if you look at it another way, you can always improve it again here. Where I've given you another example where I put in see visuals, icons, interaction design, typography, mood, and motion design. So here you have to even put less amount of brain power to understand what's going on. Visuals, you guys can see. Icons, you can see the tick mark. Interaction design, you can see the finger. Typography, you can see the T. Mood, you can understand the mood and motion design. Oh yeah, I did not mention mood. Mood is basically how a website looks and feels to the user. Like they uh, feels as in uh, at the front uh, page itself. Like when you come over here, what do you feel? This way you're not interacting much, uh, but you see this and you have a mood like, okay, I kind of like the direction they're going in. So I want to scroll down and everything. So that is a part of it, okay? So the UI, UX, there's a lot of overlap actually. All right, so here you can see the example I've given you that, you know, uh, you can improve it so much better by adding more visuals and making it easier for the user is the priority over here, right? Uh, we have a lot of people asking, please explain Hindi also. So, okay, fine, sure. Uh, if you guys are requesting this much, okay, so if you're requesting this much, please, please, please go ahead and put in the comments after this live session and like and subscribe also so that you know if you put in the request then i will remember later and i can come up with the session on uix in hindi also okay if if there's only going to be one or two people then i really don't want to do it because uh, i don't want to keep on doing it again and again only just for two people if if a lot of people are doing it that would be awesome and uh, just go ahead and put your request so i get better understanding uh, unknown is asking when is the Python Hindi next lecture? You can go ahead and check out greatlearning.in uh, slash academy where we have all the sessions uh, registered over there. All right, so let me continue with this. All right, so with UI tools, you have uh, a lot of different tools. You have uh, Adobe, uh, Adobe Illustrator where you can make those logos, where you can make those icons, and you can basically do anything you want, uh, you know, related to graphic design. You can use GIMP. Now, GIMP is a free tool. It's an open source tool. So you don't really have to pay for it. No, it's not an open source. It's free tool. Uh, you don't have to pay for it at all. So a lot of people prefer GIMP because Adobe is kind of expensive. If you don't work for a company, you have to pay the subscription fee yourself. So that's always the case, right? And Adobe also has something called Adobe Colors, uh, where it basically allows, you know, gives you a variety of color combinations and different colors that you can use. So that is also important. Color uh, Color theory is again important for UI interface, user interface, because uh, uh, certain colors are very perceptible. Like if I put a very red color over here, then it, it makes a mood in you guys. If I put a blue color, it gives you a mood, right? If I put a green color, it gives you a certain experience. So that is also part of the whole thing. And InVision again can also be used for user interface. All right, so best tool of them all. Can you guys guess again over here? There's a bit of a lag, no worries. I want to see if you guys can guess the best tool used in UI also. All right, so did you guys give me an answer for best tool of all? Uh, we have Wasim asking, what is design thinking? So uh, design thinking is basically, as I told you guys, it's the part where you start asking questions. You ask questions about the user. You make certain assumptions about how the user is going to interact or how the user is going to uh, you know, do all those things. You try to empathize with the user. So that is part of the design thinking, where you start asking questions again and again. All right, so I see the answers coming in. Uh, yes, again, the answer is right. <laughs> Anand and Shubham are right. Notebook and paper. Again, pen and paper is the best tool to use because pen and paper allow you to do quick thinking, allow you to make quick designs. So even for a UI UX, for a UI developer or a UI designer, you need a pen and paper, right? So uh, that's, again, my opinion where you need to have a pen and paper, especially if you're in these kind of uh, situations. So if you aspire to be a UX de UI developer, I would recommend going and buying a uh, notebook or just use any notebook. No need to buy some specific notebook for that, okay? Just get some any notebook, Purana notebook or old notebook, whatever you have, just use that, okay? 
All right, so now time for Q&A. We're almost done. So five more minutes. I'll take as many questions as you guys can give me. So I literally have a five minute clock. I will end the session after that. So go ahead and ask any questions you guys want. Till then, I will see what all questions you guys still have and I'll try to finish answering those. So uh, Sunny is asking, is it related to graphic design or web design only? So graphic design and web design uh, overlap a lot. You will be graphic designing for web designing, but uh, you know, you will have graphic design in a lot of other places also. It is not just for web design. So UI UX is there both in graphic design and uh, web design, right? So do you guys have any questions? I think there's a bit of a lag, so I'll just wait. Wasim has says he has one more question. Wasim, go ahead and ask that question. Uh, Shubham is, sir, I humbly request you to add both courses in GL platform. Which courses are you asking about, Shubham, in specific? We'll make a note of it. Uh, Sunny is asking, can we apply UX in any field? Uh, yes, I actually forgot to tell you this. You can apply UX in a lot of different fields. UX is basically designing, basically. So you might have heard of designing uh, where you can design a particular product. So product design is also like there. So UX generally is like a web designing thing and app designing thing, but you can use it in different fields. It's not related to just your websites. However, UI is more towards your websites, okay? So, uh, Drijit, uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Uh, so, uh, uh, Drijit is asking, uh, sorry for uh, crumpling your name. Uh, so, Drijit is asking, what should be our next step from here? So, your next step should be definitely to pick a tool and start practicing. Practicing is very important. Now, one uh, exercise I can give you guys is just to look at any uh, product or app you guys like let's say you guys like youtube a lot so i want you guys to uh, break down youtube see what all things youtube does and try to understand why they do those kind of things so let's say that they have a streaming feature why do they have that streaming feature note it down write down who can be the possible users over here why are they creating the streaming feature and uh, how can you improve it maybe try to you know redesign think about why they put those certain features and try to think what kind of changes that you can implement in that. Okay, so just practice. Practice is again important for every place, every field. Even here also practice is very important, right? So you can choose a tool also, just try Adobe XD, Figma, Sketch, whatever you guys want to try. Uh, for beginners, I would recommend XD. XD is free, so you can start using it. Figma is also free, but for like only two, three people. Uh, but uh, you can use XD, XD is completely free. You can start using that. That's a good step. Uh, Anun is asking, what is the next session? So for next session, you can go ahead and check out Great Learning uh, Academy again. Um, I right now myself don't know what the next session is because I've forgotten. Uh, we'll have a lot of sessions, so you can check them out. If you guys want more UI UX sessions, I love doing these sessions. Uh, please go recommend them in the chat that I want more UI UX. Uh, I really love how you're teaching it. And give me some love by liking and you know subscribing. And you know even if you want to share with your friends, you can do that. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, Driti Jit is asking, is it advisable to roll for uh, HFI or IDI? HFI. Once again, I uh, not exactly sure what you're talking about. Could you uh, extrapolate on that? I think you are talking about uh, one of the uh, UX UI courses. 
Hu- human factor. Okay, okay. I did not n- know about the human factor. Uh, it really depends on you how you want to start. If you can look at the resources, free resources, and you think that's fine for you, then start applying from there. Or if you want to pick up a paid course, you can try that. All right. All right. So Syed is asking UX UI full course. Yes, we will do that. Yeah, that's a planned thing for future. So st- you know, stick around. So once we do release that, I'll let you guys know about it. Okay. So Shubham is asking how to start a career in UX design. So okay, so starting a career might be a little difficult if you want to start like a proper position. So generally, this is how it works. You can get a proper position, but you do internships. You need some experience. So become some. If you're doing a some kind of job where you have to interact with people, that's a good start for you because you can always put that in your resume that I was interacting with the customers. So I made sure that the customers had a very smooth experience. So I made a pipeline in my business, whatever job I was doing, and I made sure that the users had the best experience possible over there. So these are the methods I implemented. These are the type of testings and experiments I did. That is important. Okay, and uh, apply for jobs, uh, UX jobs. Uh, you can get them uh, even in India. Uh, generally in India, it's like uh, it's UI UX is mixed, but you can find companies that are just UX. Start applying. Uh, you know, make a portfolio. Portfolio is also important. Portfolio basically will be a place where you uh, showcase all your designs, your ideas, whatever rough work you've done. People love to see your rough work, man. I mean, as a UI UX developer, you need to show your rough work. How you do the rough work, that is very important, okay? So show your rough work, show what kind of uh, designs you've created and uh, show uh, this thing also, like whatever, uh, f- you know, wireframes and prototypes you've created and tell them how you resolve certain something. Uh, if you've never worked in UX de- uh, field, then what you can do is you can take up a project like take Instagram, redesign Instagram and show all the steps you've taken to redesign Instagram. Make it as a blog post, uh, put it on Medium or make it your own blog post using WordPress or do whatever helps you create a portfolio. Okay. And uh, you uh, don't shy away from applying for internships. Internships are awesome. Uh, it's a lower bar to enter internships, but it gives you a lot of experience. So that helps. So Wasim is asking UI UX or data science, which is better for future or best future? Which profession is more demand in world? So you see, UI UX is definitely going to gain a lot of demand in future. I can tell you right now itself, even data science itself is going to get a lot of demand. So it really depends on what you like. If you love data science, if you love uh, crunching numbers and uh, uh, making uh, graphs and understanding how the data extrapolates into insights, those kind of things. If you love that, then you should go for data science. I would not stop you and tell you go for UI UX uh, if you don't love it. Okay, just see what you like and go for that. Okay. Uh, Manish is asking, what is UX? Uh, Manish, I've already done a whole session. You can watch this again to understand. UX is user experience. Okay. Yeah, uh, Dritij explained that human factor. There, there is going to be a cloud computing course also on Great Learning Academy. You can go ahead and check out that also, Syed. Okay, so last thing I'm going to answer uh, is the where can I get the icons and everything. So if you guys want the icons and everything, you can go to Flat Icon and Free Pick. Those are places where they give you free resources. Flat Icon and Free Pick. All right. So that was the last question, guys. Now I'm going to log off. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed this uh, interactive session. And I really love that you guys gave me answers back. Please do this in future sessions also. And I've seen a lot of names today, like Syed, Dritijit, and uh, Kashyap again came. Unknown was there. Now Unknown was, Basim was there. And uh, a lot of different people came today. Sunny and uh, Fashia. That name was difficult to pronounce, but you know. A lot of people came today. I really enjoyed it. So please come again. Request if you want more UX sessions. I will try to come with more UX, UX sessions so to help you guys out. Okay. So my name is Ram again. 